Hi friends, so we decided to go to Lowe's again, but it was a different Lowe's just to see what they offered in the way of seeds and other plants. And we did see this in the other Lowe's that we went to. Um, this is the Little Missy Daylily, $7.98 for two plants, two bulbs. And I was touching it and I feel it, I feel the bulb in there. So um, last year I bought the same exact thing and for some reason they didn't pop up but it could just be that I, I put them in the ground too late and it never produced anything, it never popped up and um, hopefully it'll come back up this year. Uh, but anyway, I really love the color so I decided to buy another set in case the other one died. So it's a bulb and over the winter I never did pull up the bulbs out of the pot so they may be very well dead. So I got these. Um, love the color so much. And then seven plants for $10.98 I got the Oriental Stargazer Lily. It's really pretty also from Lowe's and um, they're pretty fragrant and they're gorgeous and they're large and so exotic and um, uh, the one the other one I had I'm not sure why it didn't pop up but if I if I give a, one of my bulbs to my mom she she has a green thumb and for sure she can keep it alive and I'll always have a plant or, or of one variety or another in her hands and I might just do that. I'm gonna give her a plant and then I'll have I'll keep one with myself and one with her and I'll always have it. <laughs> they keep the plants alive for me. So friends what I ended up buying also um, I'm really obsessed with seeds right now is the Fairy Morse um, early golden acre cabbage. This will be the first cabbage seeds that I ever bought and grow and it's because uh, there's an Asian salad that uses cabbage and generally I don't like the flavor of cabbage like certain ones they're they're very like strong um, but um, in that salad it's not it's not terrible so I'm going to try to grow that and this one looks like it's more tender tender <clears throat> so let's read it early golden acre cabbage is a northern favorite that is ideal for smaller gardens round and compact their heads average two to three pounds of sweet flavor use fresh in garden salads and coleslaw or use in stir fries and homemade sauerkraut oh yes that's the other thing using it in stir fries and in coleslaw and sauerkraut. So I probably should buy more of these and start cooking more and eating more cabbage. I really want to grow corn but it's so hard because it's easy to um, you gotta shake it every day which is what I did and I successfully grew corn last year but the pests, the pests like squirrels and stuff they just keep coming around and climbing and Kind of tilting the plants down and breaking the stalks and just eating up the corn it's ridiculous and let alone the worm pests uh, i don't know what kind of worms love corn but there are they there are those things as well as besides the crit, the animal critters so i have here so this year i probably won't grow corn so, uh, but I really, really want it. I was craving it and that's why I grew it last year. They were so sweet and delicious. Um, I'll probably grow them like every other year or something like that. So here I have Fairy Morse Kale Red Russian. I haven't grown brassicas this past year because of the Harlequin bugs, but I heard good things about this kale. Um, flat leaf leaves are dark green with purple stems. It's tender leafed and grows two to three feet tall, mild, sweet flavor, and grows in spring and fall. Next, I have this Fairy Morse 
Italian salad blend and you know they're all non-GMO seeds they're not too expensive they're a little bit more than MI Gardener but then they're right there in front of you at the store and they give you quite a bit of seeds so um, and I, tr I trust that so I wasn't going to buy this, I didn't buy it the last time I was at the Lowe's, but when I was went home, I was thinking about it, and I was I had already read what they offered. I just like to have, like, know what I'm growing exactly. And when it's a mixed, uh, when it's a mixed seed mix, it's kind of hard to know which plant is which that you're eating. So like in this case, you don't know which type of leaf you're you're eating. But at the end of the day, I'm not planning on keeping the seeds for this, so it doesn't really matter. But I'm guessing that this um, mix is pretty delicious. It has um, a variety of colors, textures, tastes, and um, the leaves are best when they're young in flavor and it has 7% lettuce and um, beyond a 6% folia de quercia you know rasa freckles um, something quattro I don't know a lot of these because <laughs> I'm not brushed up on my Italian but they sound really good. Charred, all kinds of like um, exotic stuff. Next, uh, I got this cucumber spring burpless, just like the green dragon. I love that this looks. I got the fairy morse spring burpless cucumber. It looks really smooth skinned, thin skinned. Looks like it's really delicious eating. This spring burpless cucumber will produce abundant yields of slender 12 inch dark green slicing type cucumbers that are crisp and bitter free, which is a, a bonus. It's a plus. They are uniformly straight and smooth, grow best on a fence or trellis for easy harvest. Next, I got the Fairy Morse Celery Tall Utah 5270R Improved Organic Non GMO. And I, I successfully grew celery a couple times, and I really love it. And I like to eat it with peanut butter. Um, I like to stir fry it. It's really good uh, for your health. And supposedly it's good for your blood pressure. So start, okay, it says the most popular green celery, the same tender string-free, love the string-free, Variety found in food markets. Produces broad, thick stalks with a rich, nutty flavor. Cool weather vegetable. So I ran out of seeds for the celery, so I decided to get another another seed packet. Okay, one of the things I love to use in all my dishes is some kind of plant from the Allium family, whether it be chives, uh, garlic, onions, shallots, uh, spring onions, scallions. I, I love to put it in um, everything. So I like to grow it all over the place as well. And the scent um, will draw away pests, as, as I've heard. And not too many people, I mean, not too many critters harass you when you grow any of the Allium family type plants. Clip the leaves for use as seasoning in salads, cheese and egg dishes, gravies, soups for a delicate onion or garlic flavor has spear-like flat leaves and so what I plan on doing is growing it and um, air uh, freeze drying it and all kinds of stuff and using it fresh next I have this fern leaf dill and I have the tetra and I have bouquet dill and I think I have the long island bouquet dill so I'm going to try to grow this one, fern leaf one, see if it has any different flavors or just the appearance. Compact habit and flavor will be an interest to any cook. Finely cut foliage, use fresh or dried, use in container gardens or suburban herb garden. Next I have lime basil and I love the way it smells and if I put a sprig in tea or any type of 
dish. I love it. And lemon basil. So lemon basil, lime basil. Not sure if I said dill a minute ago. And of course I got carried away because I love basil. So I got several varieties. Um, I also have the bush spicy globe basil as well as the cinnamon basil. So the lime basil says or originated in Thailand, lime basil is an exotic sweet basil with a mild citrus taste. It has particularly attractive bright green foliage and well-defined leaves, excellent for flavoring sauces, dressings, and desserts, a rare find. Lemony flavor for the lemon basil and aroma, a treat in cooking or garden, lends wonderful flavor to salads, tomato dishes, cheese, omelets, and essential for pesto. For this spicy bush, a refined bush basil from Italy where it is known for its fine green leaf and formed like a ball. So perfectly uniform they look pruned. Compact attractive plants for the cinnamon basil and tempting cinnamon scent and flavor. Used as a garnish or seasoning for poultry, beef, stews, and soups. Love them all. Next I got two of these because I haven't seen them in a long time, tarragon. So I had to get two. Um, I've never grown it before and I don't know if I've tasted it before. So these are thin, blade-like, and highly aromatic. Spicy, sweet, and used in cold meat sauces, eggs, cheese, and fish. Makes, makes good flavoring for vinegar. So next I have the Lavender Munstead and it looks so pretty and recently I put the seeds on a paper towel and it said it needed to be cold stratified so I put it in but I might have put it in the fridge too long in the cold wet um, paper towel so I have not seen it come up. Um, let's see how many days it says to germination. Days to germination, 10 to 20. Wow, that's a long time. Fridge for about a month. So, but I didn't see anything sprout. And then I stuck it in the dirt. So we'll see if it comes up. If not, I have to try again. Perennial herb except in very cold areas. Silvery plant with fragrant foliage and attractive lavender flowers. I got the California Wonder 300 TMR Sweet Pepper. Now, I, I love hot peppers, but I do like bell peppers as well. And I know, although it doesn't provide as much fruit as a uh, chili pepper, I do want it because I like to the different flavors that it imparts in various foods like pizza, pasta, stuff like that. So I decided to grow it and, and I could stuff it too. That's one of my kids' favorite food is stuffed bell peppers. So I decided to get some of these. It's high in vitamin A and C. Next, I did get this before, this Quadrato de Asti Rosso. However, when I grew it um, that last year in 2023, it was not the best growing season for chili peppers or any peppers. So all I got were a few small green peppers that hadn't ripened to red yet. So I can't wait till I get the mature, fully ripe ones to see what it tastes like. Oh, see, it says this variety is good for stuff, stuffing or roasting. Next, I got the San Marzano. I've, I haven't purchased it before. I saw it a long time ago and then I haven't seen it since. And I decided to pick it up this time. A heavy yielding variety used for preserves, solid pack canning, tomato paste, and puree. Very little juice and of mild flavor. Mature fruits are three and a half inches long and one and a half inches thick. Indeterminate. Next I have this beefsteak tomato. So I hope it gets really big. I want a really big juicy one. So it says a one slice covers a hamburger bun. This favorite 
makes large fruits about 12 ounces and up to 2 pounds. Beef steak tomatoes are indeterminate and very popular and have excellent productivity to go along with a wonderful taste. Its meaty flesh makes it an ideal tomato for eating fresh or slicing for sandwiches. Sorry, my dog is drinking some water. So I got another black creme. I got a black creme last time. I haven't grown it yet, so I'm curious how it's going to taste. But it's kind of a popular one, so I decided to get a second one. Black creme is an old Russian variety, almost black in color with green shoulders. Reaching as much as 12 ounces, these globe-shaped tomatoes have a pleasantly unique salty flavor. Growing on indeterminate vines, they, these tomatoes will be unlike others you have tasted. Oh, it's salty, huh? Next, I got Rainbow Blend Tomato. At first, I wasn't going to get it, but I was looking at um, the varieties they have, and I love the colors. Great for salads. The flavors of Heirloom Rainbow Blend will dazzle your taste buds. Big, meaty fruits with a classic old-fashioned tomato flavor. This beautiful blend may include black, pink, red, yellow, brandy, wine, cherokee, purple, green zebra, white wonder, or orange Nebraska wedding. Hefty, meaty tomatoes have a rich flavor that can't be found in hybrid varieties. Indeterminate. Love it. And for dessert, I picked up this golden honey watermelon. So when do you ever get to eat a yellow watermelon? So I heard that the yellow watermelon was the original, and then they bred it to have the red inside. They preferred it. but um, So these are the original types of watermelons. Golden honey watermelon has a beautiful dark green rind with irregular stripes. The fruit grows to 12 by 10 inches diameter and around 20 to 30 pounds. has a great sweet sugary crisp taste with bright golden yellow flesh compact but vigorous productive vines awesome and i had thought i purchased a charleston gray watermelon i don't believe that i did so when i spotted it i had to grab it because i'm obsessed with this light colored exterior sometimes gray looking and the pale pink center and its size looks decent Cut through the pale green, finely veined rind to find bright red, sweet, crisp flesh inside. Large oblong fruits weigh 30 pounds and are disease resistant. Now for the flowers. I saw this skyscraper and I thought, how tall can it be? So it says 12 feet tall. Bright yellow flowers grow to 14 inches or better on strong stalks. The size will amaze everyone. A jumbo size treat heat and drought tolerant. Then I got the mixed colors blend. Look at that, how pretty. So old fashioned biennials with sweetly scented flowers, combinations of pink, red, white. Each stem forms a mini bouquet of small double blooms. Next I got the dwarf sunspot and this one is only 18 inches tall. Single stem giant sunflowers in mini in mini have blooms up to 10 inches in diameter, eye-catching charm, seed heads attract multitudes of birds. Then I got the Dwarf Incredible Sunflower, two feet tall. Now you can enjoy sunflowers that aren't 10 feet tall. Dwarf Incredible is unique golden sunflower that sports a full-size head on a dwarf plant. Next, I got the Fairy Moore Spatula Button. I already have the Blue Boy and the other variety, which I'm not remembering right now, which you can get at the Dollar Tree, both the Blue Boy and the other one. But I saw this polka dot mix colors, and I think it this is different. And then that has that pink center and the outer. Same with those, they're kind of darker in the center. I just thought it was really, really cute. And if it's a different variety, um, a different you know look, then I'll I'll definitely get it. Bushy dwarf plants with showy double blooms in a colorful mix of white, blue, pink, and carmine. Perky blooms on compact plants. They get to be about 16 inches tall. <clears throat> and I got some gazania. At first I wasn't going to get it, but this really drew me to it. I love how that 
looks. It's so exotic. Um, kind of like some Asian flowers, but I'm guessing this may be from Africa. Like African daisies. I'm not sure. Uh, let's read. Bright, vibrant flowers with a variety of colors. Large flowers come in a mix of solid and striped cream, yellow, orange, pink, and red petals. Looks really, really gorgeous. Next, the Dahlia Rainbow Mixed Colors. I already have the Dahlia Unwinds, but I wonder if these blooms are bigger because the Unwinds is a dwarf variety. Oh, I guess it's pretty short, 18 inches tall. Compact plants with double and semi-double flowers, colors of white, yellow, pink, orange, red, and rosy purple. Great for containers, beds, and borders. And finally, I wasn't going to get this one either, but um, one, it's a perennial, and two, I wanted something bluish purple. Now it says blue balloon flower, but the the color comes off as purple but you know what it might be the trick of the eye or the camera because sometimes um, when I've filmed certain flowers the color that I see in front of me is not the color that I see in my camera and I, I don't know if it's just that you know the range is not as great for cameras I'm not sure but if it comes out blue, it'd be nice, and I want as many blue things as possible. Oval serrated leaves with blue bell-shaped flowers that open from balloon-like buds. Very showy and colorful. Bloom's first year, it started, if started indoors. So, and it's about three feet tall. <clears throat> and it's very pretty. So, why not? At Lowe's today, I just happened to stroll over, and I wasn't thinking much of anything, but this is just absolutely gorgeous. For $18.98, you get these beautiful ranunculus blooms, and there are so many. This is gorgeous. It's a color of romance, I tell ya. Gorgeous. And then there are some red and orange ones. Beautiful calanchoes in two tones of this pink and this lighter pink. And in the even bigger pot for $29.98, these are gorgeous and in good shape, really healthy. And you can overwinter it and you can also save the crumbs for the following year. So it's not like you only have them for one year. I decided I would grow more cabbages. So I decided to get this Fairy's Round Dutch from Fairy Morse. So I think that's why it's called Fairy's Round Dutch. It looks quite robust. And... Cabbage Copenhagen Market early, so it looks like it's going to be an early um, producer. 66 days versus 71 days. Uh, so we'll see how they taste and then which ones I will get from for years to come. For the Fairies Round Dutch, it says, Takes cold weather better than most varieties. Forms compact heads weighing 3 to 5 pounds at maturity. High in vitamins A, B1, B2, and C. Then for the Copenhagen market early, the best known early cabbage forms six inch solid heads two to three weeks before large late types. Heads weigh two to three pounds at maturity, an ideal size for the family refrigerator. This packet will plant approximately a 70 foot row. So I just plan on planting a few crops, not rows, not huge rows like that, just so that um, I can make some salad and um, maybe some stir fries or something with it. 
Um, as far as sauerkraut and stuff, I haven't yet tried that. As I said, this is the first time I'm growing cabbage. Next, I got this early white Vienna kohlrabi. Earlier this season, I threw it in the ground around December. And for some reason, I'm not really sure if it's because my nasturtiums grew over top of it or whatnot, but it didn't really grow. <laughs> so I have no idea what exactly happened. If it was too cold, no clue. So, and I think I used the whole seed packet. So now I'm going to try it again. Kohlrabi Early White Vienna easily grows for its white flesh swollen stem. This cool weather vegetable resembles an above ground turnip. Mild flavor, it has a crisp mild flavor that's best when eaten at the two to three inch size. Tender bulbs are high in vitamin C, cool weather vegetable. So if you like the stems, the, the hard part of the broccoli, this is what I've been told that that's what it is like. That So this, this is really good because I do love the stems of cauliflower and broccoli. Um, we try to eat as much of it as possible. We eat the leaves of broccoli, the broccoli florets, and we eat the, the stems as well. So nothing goes to waste. Next we got this pepper hot mix. And at first upon looking at it, I don't know what the mix is, so I wasn't going to buy it. But for only $2.19, it's not bad. And I was reading the description of it. These two inch long flame shaped peppers mature from green to red and are hot at either stage. Fruits have thin walls which make them ideal for drying and sprinkling on foods. Also perfect for adding to chili sauce and salsa or making hot pepper vinegar and pickles. Vigorous plants produce loads of fruits, a favorite of Mexico, pungency of 2,500 to 4,000 Scoville units. So sounds good to me because I like um, hot sauces and hot peppers on my food, on practically everything. Next, I got this what is called sweetie tomato and I was looking at how many fruit per rack or per branch and I was like, that must be a good producer and I'm, I, I would like to give it a try if it's got a good flavor as well. So it says deliciously sweet bite-sized red tomatoes used in salads or served on toothpicks as appetizers. Tall indeterminate vines provide bountiful harvest all season. So I love that. High in vitamin A and C. Perfect. Next I got this delicious tomato and it looked really scrumptious. I love how round it is. I have no idea how big it is but given its name delicious I'm wondering if it is really delicious. This variety set the world record for size. The huge plump crack resistant fruits average one to two pounds but set the world record at seven pounds. Fruits develop their characteristic rich full flavor even in cooler temperatures. Indeterminate vines produce fruits throughout the season until frost. So I love that, that it's a great producer. And I had no idea from the picture how big it would be. I thought it was a medium sized tomato, but it can be one to two pounds. So, and rich and full in flavor. And, um, great in even cooler temperatures. So I should start that now. Next I have the watermelon triple crown hybrid. Now I don't know if it's the way that they cut it where uh, because they have seeds that are lined up in a row like that and then um, they uh, they cut it off just right before all the seeds are or whatnot but <laughs> it looks practically seedless and if it does have seeds you'll see the little white little ones that aren't mature and, and so you can eat them so I don't know but it doesn't say that it's seedless which is fine um, but I was just curious because triple crown, crown watermelons sounds good to me and I don't plan on keeping many seeds from my melons and watermelons um, so it's just nice just to grow it to eat. So it produces 
It produces high yields of seedless oval fruit weighing 18 to 20 pounds. The firm red flesh contrasts nicely with the striped green rind. And I love that it's a, a smaller one so it'll produce the fruit quicker. So we'll have like different watermelons throughout the season. Next I got more of the Velvet Queen Sunflower. I'm really big into the red sunflowers right now. They come in such beautiful shades that you just don't expect because you, you see a lot of the yellow ones and just um, to see a red one every now and then it's so gorgeous. Produces 8 to 10 inch velvety crimson blossoms. The dark blossoms are perfect for cut flowers. Cut flowers to extend the blooming season. Love it. Next I got this birdhouse gourd. I saw it last time when I was at Lowe's but I decided not to get it but this time I decided that I would because um, I definitely can make a whole lot of things with it like little birdhouses or um, in Asian culture you could um, cut off the top and hollow it out and wash it really well um, let it dry of course to cure and then you can use it as a, like a drink holder to hold your drinks um, other various things uh, I can come up with or just for the kids to decorate or a rattle that's been used for that as well so it says it's perfect for making a functional birdhouse let the mature fruits fully dry, then create openings for birds to enter and their new home. Kids love them. So I got myself this chrysanthemum from Costco. It's about three feet tall, which is ginormous. And look at these beautiful giant blooms. I mean, like they are huge. I, I can't tell you, they're about four inches across or three and a half inches across. And they're so beautiful and healthy. And I got this from Costco for only seven something you'll see in the video um, where, whereas when I went to Home Depot there was one that was only two feet tall or 18 inches tall and they were selling it for $16 so it was twice the price for a much smaller plant so you definitely get a good deal when you shop around and I love chrysanthemums for their cheeriness but especially these are big and also um, they help repel a lot of pests and hopefully I can stick it in the ground and have it come back year after year. I believe it is perennial in my zone.